Hey there everybody, welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my next review for the Stargate SG-1 franchise. And so for this particular review, it's going to be for Season 4. So a quick summary of the episode, or the season, is that in the fourth season, alliances are tested, hints of an ancient legacy are found, and a new power emerges on Earth. So basically this season was all about the or more about the personal relationship building than more of the intergalactic um relationship building so you have um members of the SU1 helping the Tokra test out um devices you have um more of the relationship with Colonel O'Neill and the Tokra and how he he trusts them on this level as far as he knows that they're not ghouled, but he's not trusting them as far as how they go about things. And it's kind of mirrored in what General Hammond says as well, that he doesn't like how they go about doing things, so it's a matter of keeping them on a short leash. And um, as far as the um, ancient legacy, we learned that there was a um, ghoul, there, that, or we see a further relationship of the ghoul on Earth as far as Ra, Osiris, and Seth, and how they were wronged in their relationship um, back in the day. So there is that, and then the new superpower that emerges is that the Russians, it turns out that the Russians have a satellite, or sorry, a Stargate, not a satellite, it's the one that was recovered um, as part of the um, crashing of Thor's ship in the Pacific Ocean. So it turns out they were testing and running their own Stargate program, and in their testing and rushing, trying to rush through things, they turn on the Stargate but are unable to close it because of um, them stealing some heavy water that turned out to be an or a living organism. So um, overall, that wasn't really an emerging of the Russians as a Stargate player in so much as we learned that the Russians have a Stargate with a DHD, the dial home device, and that supersedes the uh, U- uh, mil- U.S. military Stargate because of um, the United States military re- reverse engineering their dialing system. So overall, that was a, a progression there as far as um what's going to come in later seasons as far as the United States and Russia's working together and the U- U.S. taking lead and ultimately spending the money to run the Stargate program but keeping the Russians in the loop uh, for their silence. I think in the, I want to say in the next season or maybe season six, if there is the ultimate revelation to the world or the leading world superpowers of the Stargate program and what it entails and how they want to switch it over to a public forum i think and this is how memory if memory serves but thor or someone from the avatar come in and intervene that the u.s is the best uh, people for the job because they've been out there they have the experience and they ultimately trust it and trust the united states and they ultimately trust sg1 and colonel o'neill the most and don't want to have to force new alliances and they don't know how other countries are gonna um react and go outside in the world so basically to say that SGU-1 is the best option because they understand the risks and they've proven themselves to be up to par as far as um, war- or involving themselves on the intergalactic scale. But that's um, ultimately in future seasons. This season was basically just that relationship building with or further relationship building with the Tok'ra and keeping them at arm's length but doing things in the spirit of working together um the season ultimately closes with them working together because of um Selmak via the Tok'ra uh learning that Apophis and Heruor are teaming together to combine their fleets so that um Apophis can take over the system lords but then ultimately taking Heruor getting the um territory and domain of Cronus. Um, SG-1 intervenes in that they st- or they've taken over Cronus's um, mothership and have taken him out and ultimately drive a rift between Apophis and Harrower, but in their escape they're thrown hundreds and thousands of light years outside of their own galaxy and are left to face off against Apophis's fleet. Um, so I think this is one of those cases where the Asgard helped them out or somehow 
I th- if memory serves, the Asgard come out, come in to help them out. But once I get into season five, we'll see how that all resolves itself. So there's really not much else to say about this season, as you can tell. I mean, it's really it was really all about the humans and the Tok'ra. Um, very minimal interactions with the Gould. I want to say as far as um, overall care- progression, but they did bring up the. Um, they're, they did further right the idea of the gold system lords and their territories and domains and the shifting power structure and that the Tokra wanted to keep things as they were because it keeps the system lords in fighting it keeps the system lords in um, fighting with each other rather than the galaxy as a whole but by SG-1 taking out the various system lords like Ra and Hathor and Cronus now they're um, causing the, the system lords to create alliances, consolidate their forces, and focus their energies on the other races like the humans um, because they realize that there's a threat to their power. Um, and same thing, along the, less so along the lines of the Jaffa, but we see that um, undermining um, centuries and centuries of uh, brainwashing by the ghouls of the Jaffa is a harder prospect than Teal and Braytac realize, so getting people to or getting the Jaffa to fight up uh, or rise up is going to be hard um I think in by the t- time of the s- season finale of season four I think this is around the time when Teal goes back to Apophis and becomes his first prime again and SG-1 has to unbrainwash him so um I know I think there's going to be an episode or two on that um so from here I don't really really remember what happens over the next couple of seasons and i want to say the last few seasons of this the series were related to um the ancients and the ori i want to say but um these next few seasons are going to ultimately be the uh, panning out of the destruction and downfall of the system lords i think the rise of ball um and basically ultimately the downfall of the asgard as well with the replicators so um, I'm kind of curious, and I can't wait to rewatch those episodes for um, all of the stuff that's coming up. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, my you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, you can get... Um, Updates on upcoming episodes and scheduled shows, access to the show notes for headphones, Neil News, and things like that on the Patreon at patreon.com slash patelin01. But that's all there is for this particular review. And of course, um, if you're a patron, you'll, there's gonna be, you already know about what the final review of the year is going to be. So be sure to support the show so you can get access to that. So look out for that review uh, coming um, in the next couple of days as of this recording. Um, and as a teaser, it is going to be an Android app review. But to get which Android app review, you'll have to become a patron. But thanks for tuning into this particular review, and until next time.